Okay, now we went over the library of functions for a very specific reason. They are the base functions that everything else is going to come from uh, that we're going to be doing. Now, we absolutely need to have a good idea of our base functions whenever we work with piecewise defined functions. And this is an example of a piecewise defined function. Now, notice that it has two different equations as part of its f of x. This is what gives it the name piecewise function because it happens in pieces. Now, I want to do something so we can kind of um, explore this as we go. We have the equation of x cubed, and if you'll remember, that is a, a cube function that took on a shape something like that. And we also have 3x plus 2. That's a linear function that does something like this. It's a, just a straight line. Well, if I wanted to know exactly what those two look like, I could go to my um, graphing calculator and look at it. In my y1 and y2, I have entered in these two different equations. And now I'm going to hit zoom 6 so that I can get a nice picture of it. This is what they look like. Here is my x cubed equation, and then the straight line is my 3x plus 2 equation. Now notice, when we put both of these um, together on the same screen, this is no longer a function. Because look at what happens here. If I were to draw in a vertical line down through here, it's going to hit this graph in two spots. Now remember, the vertical line test is what tells us whether something is a function or not. So this now no longer passes the vertical line test. Okay, now that being said, let's go back to our um, problem here. That is exactly why we have these things out here at the side. We have this part that says if x is less than 0, and for this one it says if x is greater than or equal to 0. These are categories in a way. They're actually called restrictions on the domain, but um, kind of a, an easier way of thinking about them is just to say that they're categories. If your x happens to fall in this first category, that means we're going to use this equation, the x cubed. If your x happens to fall in the second category, then we would use the second equation. But we cannot use both because that would give us two different y values for the same x and that's not allowed. Let's see how this would work. Move up just a little bit here. Okay, for part a, it says to find the f of negative 1. Well, if I look at an x value of negative 1, we need to first decide which category does that fall into. Well, a negative 1 is less than 0, so that tells us we're going to be using this equation, the x cubed. So that means I would take negative 1 and cube it to get negative 1. So the f of negative 1 is negative 1. Now I only have one answer, and that's what I need. Okay, part b says to find the f of 0. I need to decide which category it falls into. So the second category says that I'm going to use that equation if x is greater than or equal to 0. So it falls into this category which tells me to use this second equation of 3x plus 2. So I'm going to be evaluating 3x plus 2 using an x value of 0. So 3 times 0 would be 0 plus 2 would be 2. So the f of 0 is 2. Now for the last part, the f of 1. Again, we need to decide which category it falls into. 1 is greater than 0, so we're going to be using our second equation. So 3 times 1 plus 2 would give us a 5. So the f of 1 is 5.